Hi guys, I'm Jessica Mandeville with MyFashionPlate.com and we're in LA to speak with designer Jenna Wad. Tell us a little bit about how your Peruvian and Egyptian descent have influenced your designs. I've been raised around a lot of very strong and bold women. I mean, Egyptian, Egyptian women are very passionate and very emotional. They're very intense. They like gold. They're gaudy. And then in the Peruvian side, they're very bold and they're very tough and, you know, they live life on their own terms. Uh -huh. and, uh, I like to incorporate both of that mentality that I got from both sides into one and that, that's kind of what I use from that. I use bold colors, I use very intense silhouettes, very, very rough cuts, you know, but that but good finishes and I think it all really comes together. I just wanted to design a, collect, a group of pieces that I thought women could have in their closets for a really long time. You yeah. Know, so uh, I know the silhouettes are beautiful. I very like them. Very like kind of Peggy Sue, like 1950s, yeah. you know. Um, but I also wanted wearable things that were kind of very bright and vivid. Yet, mm -hmm. you know, I could wear that and identify with that. Um, a lot of black top stitching and ripped silk embroidery for the logo. A little bit of a branding. Definitely, my music really inspires what I do. It goes hand in hand because when I'm on stage, I you know, it's, it's almost your job to demand people's attention, not because you want the attention, but you want people to focus on your music and you want them to say, hey, she's really good. So I kind of took that idealistic notion and I put it into my clothing. And so I think that's why they kind of just go hand in hand. So I kind of put my fantasies of what I would like to wear into my runway. I think that we're really pushing forward now. I think everyone's going through towards this direction where anything really goes. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of taking advantage of that in the sense that, you know what, you want to wear hot pants, wear hot pants. Put some black tights underneath and you're good. Go out. You yeah. Know, have a good time. Or wear it to the beach. Okay. To my senses and now. Over here were the just little concept sketches for my own print for the Drunken Roses border print. Yeah, tell us about what are the, what are the Drunken Roses? The Drunken Roses are the girls of L.A. in Hollywood. You know, they're all dolled up and they're, they're gorgeous and then, you know, 2 a.m. they come out and they're just stumbling everywhere. You know, and that's kind of what that they are. Pretty. It's kind yeah. of my homage to L.A. girls. Yeah. But in a good way, you know, we like to have a good time, we like to dress up and then we're a hot mess at the end of the night. So you're not afraid <laughs> to like get dirty. So they're literally wearing their, their life on, on the borders of their, their clothing. It's very deep. The revival of Glitz was just kind of me being a little nostalgic and just missing, you know, the glamour of, of fashion and whatnot because I think that a lot of people are going to this new age, avant-garde, cutting edge, nonsense. And I think mm -hmm. women forgot how to look like women. And then the Pink Recession was funny because it was a reaction to that. I was like, well, you know, not everyone's going to want to wear that. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something that's completely in the times especially around June or so, everyone was just talking about the recession, the recession, jobs are getting cut, whatever. So I wanted to do like a really simple group to me, you know? Uh -huh. So just pink dresses and bows, and that's and it. As I saw into the sky. You used a lot of color in, in a, one of your groups that you showed in you. I think, I think it's important, yeah. Oh, the Inca Pop collection. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, that actually was, you know, derived while I was in Peru. You know, oh, tell I was about that. Well, I was I was trying to keep actually funny enough. I was trying to keep this collection very, you know, uh, limited, like black, white, hot pink, beige, done. Really? Yeah. And then I went to Peru, and we went to this this street, which is like downtown LA in, in Peru. It's called Gamara, and we go underground. It's like an underground fabric shop, and this lady just rolls out loads of just yards and yards of just chiffon, like crinkled chiffon. And, Orange, hot pink, purple, green, yellow, and I was like, oh my god, I can't do this. <laughs> can't resist. I can't do this. So then that's where we kind of did the whole Inca pop, you know, theme. Yeah, it was and really neat to so see. So that was fun. Mm -hmm. So what are your plans for the future? It's, it's definitely nothing that I've been doing lately at all. You know, I'm definitely taking this to a completely different direction. I'm kind of starting to bite into the whole futuristic oh, concept. Oh, wow. Yeah. 
And it took me a really long time to dig into because I was kind of against it. I'm very much in the now or in the past. I love retro glamour and whatnot. So yeah. I'm basically kind of marrying the two. The futuristic notion like post-apocalyptic meets like, you know, the effortless beauty of like the 1940s. What is left to say? I noticed here that you have like a lot of um, really cool hats and really cool accessories. Do you... Um plan to expand into accessories? Definitely. I, I wanted to do handbags and, and hats and stuff for this season, but time did not allow. So I just did shoes and gloves instead, necklaces, chandelier necklaces. And, uh, but, you know, once, once I, once I kind of get things right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do everything. I think that the, the most important thing is that there is no right way or wrong way to do to get into this industry. I think if you feel like it's meant to happen, then you, you need to make it happen. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I think that when you go to school, you're instilled with a lot of rules. That I respect. People need a structure. They need an order. But they lose themselves in that. And uh, they, they think that they have to stick to a straight line. And, and one thing about the fashion industry is they're not. But the good thing about the beginning of the industry is that people are willing to help you out a lot. People are very kind. People want to help. People will sponsor you. If they think you're good, they're going to help you out no matter what. So it, it really doesn't hurt to just try. Even if it starts with a little show, you know, no press, no buyers, it doesn't matter about that. Just to get yourself in the right direction. I never thought I'd do LA fashion, you know, so, you know, why not? Well, I never back.